We are heading into a record-breaking season for the World Endurance Championship. 2024 is expected to be phenomenal, and there are multiple reasons why. So in this video, I'll tell you the major details that you need to know ahead of the 2024 season of the WEC. There's a lot of excitement around this new season. In the top class of Hypercar, we will see the biggest grid size we've ever seen in this championship before, and there's also new Hypercars joining the grid. We're also heading into an exciting new era for GT racing in which every single car competing in GT this year will be brand new to the WEC. I'll talk more about GT racing in just a moment. The fact is, there are a lot of reasons to want to watch the WEC in 2024. But besides the cars and the categories they're placed in, why is the WEC so important? Well, the World Endurance Championship is considered to be one of the greatest endurance motorsport series out there that races internationally. And don't get me wrong, there are other great endurance racing series out there, ones that are as or even more competitive than the WEC, such as IMSA for example. But in terms of racing across the globe, with prototypes and GT cars present, and the series attracting manufacturers from all over, in my opinion, the WEC is the pinnacle of that. Also, the WEC houses one of the biggest and most famous endurance races out there, the 24 Hours of Le Mans, which needs no introduction. But anyway, let me tell you about the categories featured this season. In the WEC in 2024, there will be primarily two classes. There's the Hypercar class, which is a category of prototypes, and the LMGT3 class, which is a category of GT cars. And you might be wondering, where is the LMP2 class? Well, that category has actually been removed by the WEC for 2024. However, the LMP2 cars will make a one-off appearance at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, with 15 or so entries out on track. One of the reasons why the WEC removed the LMP2 class is to bring forward more cars in the other two categories. This championship's flagship category, the Hypercar class, is heading into its fourth season of competition. And if you thought 2023 was good, just wait till I tell you about the 2024 season for this category. But the prototypes in the Hypercar class this year continue to use the regulations of Le Mans Hypercar and LMDH. The Hypercar class is set to be record-breaking on so many levels, mainly due to the fact of the grid size for this year. I mean, if we look to the season opener in Qatar, there will be 19 Hypercars out on track. That's more entries than the biggest event that was held in 2023, which was the 100-year anniversary race of the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Besides the spectacular Hypercar class, we will also see some incredible racing in the GT ranks, and for 2024, there are some big changes for GT racing in the WEC. Gone are the old GTE regulations, and in are the GT3 regulations. And these regulations plan to increase the number of entries out on track and provide closer racing. So the LMGT3 class is certainly going to be exciting, as we head into a new era for GT racing in the WEC. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in knowing more information about Hypercar and LMGT3, I made two helpful videos that explain all the details. I'll put links in the description down below to both videos. So I've talked about the categories and their regulations, but now let me tell you about the manufacturers and cars participating in this championship. So for this season, the WEC has a record-breaking 14 manufacturers participating this year which indeed is the most manufacturers we've ever seen in the series before. The Hypercar class this season sees 9 manufacturers on the grid, making up a total of 19 full-time entries for the season. Out of the 5 that are returning from 2023, there's Toyota with the GR010 with Toyota Gazoo Racing running the entries, Ferrari with the 499P with AF Corsa once again running the entries, 
Porsche is returning with the 963, with entries coming from Team Penske, Hertz Team Jota, and Proton Competition once again. Peugeot is also back with an updated 9x8 hypercar from Imola onwards, and entries will come from Peugeot Sport Total Energies. And finally, out of the five brands returning is Cadillac and their V-Series R. The singular full-season entry will be run by Chip Ganassi Racing, although another team set to make an appearance at the 24 Hours of Le Mans is the 2023 IMSA Champions Action Express Racing. Meanwhile, the manufacturers of Glickenhaus and Van Wall will not return to the WEC for 2024. Glickenhaus has unfortunately ceased their hypercar project, and as for Van Wall, their entry, the Van der Waal 680, has been rejected for this season. Adding to the five manufacturers in hypercar are four new ones. There's BMW with the M Hybrid V8, with Team WRT running the operation. Then there's Alpine with the all-new A424, with Signatech running two LMDH prototypes. Lamborghini is entering hypercar with the SC63, with Iron Lynx as the team. And finally, Isotto Fraschini is joining with Team Duquesne in charge of running the Tipo 6 LMH Competizioni. So far, out of these four, BMW is the most experienced manufacturer to take their hypercar into racing, as the M Hybrid V8 has already competed in IMSA's GTP category. On the other hand, Alpine is new to the hypercar regulations, but in a confusing story, has already raced in the category. They did so for two years with a grandfathered LMP1 car called the A480, which was technically just a Rebellion R13. But regardless, Alpine is ready to take on the competition with their brand new A424. And while Lamborghini and Isotto Fraschini are brand new to this hybrid prototype endurance racing, they are eager to challenge the competition in 2024. It's great to see these four new brands join this category, as it reminds us that the progression of hypercar is truly starting another golden age. Moving on to LMGT3, and these are all new GT race cars to appear in the WEC. First off, there's Porsche with the 911 GT3R with Manti Racing running two entries, BMW with the M4 GT3 with WRT Racing in charge of running entries, then there's Aston Martin bringing the all-new Vantage GT3 with Heart of Racing and D-Station running entries, then there's Ferrari with the 296 GT3, with Vista AF Corsa running two entries. In this class, there are also two American manufacturers, with Chevrolet bringing the Corvette Z06 GT3R, with TF Sport running the operation in the WEC, and Ford is making their long-awaited return to the WEC with the Mustang GT3, with Proton Competition running entries. McLaren is also joining with a 720S GT3 Evo, with United Autosports in charge of running entries. Lexus is making their debut in the WEC with the RCF GT3, with a CODIS ASP team running the entries. Finally, there's Lamborghini, bringing the Hurricane GT3 Evo, with Iron Lynx and Iron Dames as the team's running cars. So in this class, there are 9 manufacturers that make up the 18 full-time entries that will hopefully provide some excellent racing in the debut year of the LMGT3 class. This season will also see the return of BOP, or Balance of Performance. The BOP system will be applied on both Hypercar and LMGT3 entries across each event in the WEC. Although, with the majority of hypercar entries returning from last season, we will hopefully see a better BOP system in place for the hypercar class specifically, which will hopefully increase the competition. The 2024 championship marks the 12th season of competition in the Modern World Endurance Championship. Back in the day, the majority of endurance racing events, such as the 24 Hours of Le Mans, were under the banner of the World Sports Car Championship. This championship existed from 1953 until 1992, but 20 years later in 2012, the World Sports Car Championship was revived and renamed to the World Endurance Championship, the same series we know and love today. 2012 was indeed the first season for this modern World Endurance Championship, with the championship going to Audi Sport Team Yost and their number one LMP1 R18 entry, 
driven by Andre Lottera, Benoit Trulier, and Marcel Fassler. But the WEC has come a long way since its inaugural season in 2012. Just look at the top class, for example. In LMP1 in 2012, only Audi and Toyota were present as car manufacturers, where now the top class has nine manufacturers in hypercar. So new categories, cars, and teams aren't the only thing new for the WEC in 2024, because there are also some new tracks and returning ones for the calendar this year. The season kicks off at the Qatar 1812 kilometer event at the LaSalle International Circuit in the country of Qatar. Then the series heads to the Imola Circuit for the six hours of Imola for round two. Following Imola is a familiar event, the Six Hours of Spa, which of course is held at the Spa-Francorchamps circuit in Belgium. Then there's the most famous event on the calendar, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. This is of course the longest event on the schedule, and it takes place at the Circuit de la Sarthe. The WEC then heads to the Interlago circuit in Sao Paulo, Brazil for the first time since 2014 for the Rolex Six Hours of Sao Paulo, and then it's another returning circuit, the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. This event is called Lone Star Le Mans, and it makes its appearance in the WEC for the first time since 2020 when Rebellion Racing took victory. To close out the season will be two familiar events. The six hours of Fuji held at the Fuji Speedway in Japan is round seven, and the finale is once again the Babco Energy's Eight Hours of Bahrain, held, of course, at the Bahrain International Circuit. Oh, and you may have noticed that there are some circuits that aren't apparent on this WEC calendar that were in 2023. These tracks include Sebring, Portimao, and Monza. And I gotta say, it's kind of unfortunate to not see Monza on this 2024 schedule, but the reason why it's not is because there's track resurfacing plans in the way of a potential six-hour event. Hopefully, according to recent rumors, we'll see the iconic Italian circuit return in 2025. So this upcoming season is set to be pretty entertaining. Although, you may still be wondering, how is someone supposed to watch the WEC action in 2024? Well, the main place to watch World Endurance Championship action live is through the official WEC app. This, in my opinion, is the easiest way to watch the WEC in 2024, although it's not the only option. Some places across the globe have other ways to broadcast the events, such as HBO in the USA or Eurosport over in Europe. And if watching live is not an option, don't worry, there are workarounds. Sometime after the events, the World Endurance Championship posts the full race replay on their official YouTube channel. I also plan to do live streams as well as normal videos on the recaps for each race for the WEC this year. So those are definitely two ways of catching up on this championship's racing outside of watching the events live. So that was my season preview for the upcoming 2024 World Endurance Championship. This season is expected to be record-breaking on so many levels. Hypercar, LMGT3, and the LMP2 class for Le Mans exclusively are set to provide some incredible racing, the likes we've never seen before. What are your thoughts as we head into another season of the WEC? As always, let me know all your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, I highly suggest you do so, considering I make endurance racing content mainly on WEC and IMSA every single week. And if you want to see another video, check out the options on the screen. So for now, that's it from me. I'll see you all in the next video.